Commander Architects talking school safety, and right now we welcome in Lieutenant Perry Johnson, Commander, Juvenile Division, St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Also Lieutenant Colonel Jeff Bader, Commanding Officer, Department of Operational Support, and Lieutenant Colonel Ronnie Robinson, Assistant Chief of Police, St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. And as we talk school safety, all of the administrators so far, everyone who's been here has said it's part and parcel to be working with local law enforcement. And for all of you, uh, how important is it to have that engagement with the schools to know what their school looks like, what their safety concerns are? I'll say it's something that's essential. You got to have it. Um, it's a part of your everyday structure of your department because the schools pl play a major role in the things that are going on in your community. So that's something that you, you, you have to have at minimal. Is it more than ever in your career, Jeff? Have you seen that where the, the, you're always concerned about the safety of those kids, but now it's at a different level? Um, we, uh, it is, and uh, it's, it's on a lot of levels. What we're facing is what all the other law enforcement agencies are facing is we're combating the false information that's on social media sometime. Um, as Lieutenant you know, uh, said earlier in the day, when we receive a threat, we have to investigate that threat as if it's real. Uh, so the, the communication between the police and school uh, today, I think, is a lot better, but it has to be a lot better than it was 10 or 15 years ago. And we were talking off air, uh, Ronnie, that a lot of it is not just what happens at school, but sometimes in the neighborhood it carries on or continues into the schools. Yeah, definitely. The uh, potential for uh, problems that develop in a community in a neighborhood can end up at the school because a lot of times uh, just by the culture of the city, we have a long, uh, a healthy relationship with working with the St. Louis Public Schools. And some of our kids that lived in some of the more challenged neighborhoods uh, get into conflicts. In a, in a neighborhood and uh, they may not be able to carry out an act of vengeance or revenge and at that time and that carries on to the next day or the next week and they these kids look for each other and the kid says well I can catch him at school and then we'll have an incident at a school with trouble responding to the school or either at dismissal or arrival when the kids come to the school. How much of it is advising to the area schools and, and, and telling them, hey, you got to follow these procedures because people get, we all get kind of lax. We're all real strict for a day, and then the next day we're not as strict. How much of what you guys do is reminding them to like stay on top of their game? A lot of it. A lot of it is just two-way communication, um, being there, talking with them, exposing them to the things that are going on, letting them know, hey, there are things that are going on that you need to help us with and stay on top of your game so that we can – maximize the safety that we're providing for the children that you're providing yeah same thing for us you know in the county and uh you know we you know the city has the benefit of a lot of the schools fall under the same school district county as everybody knows has a lot of different school districts a lot of the municipal departments approach it the same way St. Louis county we maintain a constant communications liaison with these schools primarily through our so sros our school resource officers and our dare officers uh, you know, if they can keep us advised of their concerns, we can keep them advised of pending threats or problems we see coming. And through ongoing communications, we're a lot of times able to head off problems before they occur. What do you, what do you guys see as, as the biggest challenge? Is it assessing threats as, in terms of what's real and what isn't? Because we don't want to be a nation of panicky people, but we also don't want to be blind to what could be a real threat is that always i mean you guys may hear things on a daily basis that never end up on the news yeah. thank god but i imagine that there's a lot of assessing what's real right. just like the colonel said he every threat uh, every call you have to investigate as if it's real you can't play anything cheap uh relative to the protection and the safety of our children in the schools they're our most important commodity today and they're the future of our of our city of our of our country and uh uh, as a commander of juvenile, I, I used to have the job that Perry has in my career, and, and, and before that I was a gang unit supervisor, and uh, I always had a relationship with the teachers and had my detectives assigned to the most volatile schools where they went there on a consistent basis, and that communication is very important. There shouldn't be a day that goes by if you have the manpower and opportunity to get by a school and just check on the school. It may take you doing your tour of duty, it may take you 10, 20, 30 minutes, but it's so important.